2014 Thor Motor Coach Palazzo XCS Freightliner chassis. Cummins diesel engine. And I'm going to demonstrate how to replace the air brake system or the air system desiccant filter. And here is the new desiccant filter kit. It comes complete with the uh, desiccant filter um, as well as the um, O-rings and the grease for assembly. First thing I want to make sure you do is remove all the air from the air system. And so what I've already done is I've actually went into uh, the inside and I have um, pumped the brakes uh, numerous times until I evacuated all the air from the air system. And there's also a Schrader valve on the air dryer where the desiccant filter is installed. Uh, there is a Schrader valve on that uh, assembly itself, and I'm going to make sure there's no more air left in the system by simply using a, uh, a tire fill tool uh, with no hose on it. And it's obviously got a uh, Schrader valve uh, connector, so I'm going to get down here and uh, make sure there's no more air in the system. All right, so sorry for the poor light, but that's all I got. Um, so here is your, um, here's the air dryer assembly. And this is the uh, Bendix AD-9 uh, air dryer. Um, the desiccant filter is inside that housing right there. It looks like a small air tank. And there are, um, there's nuts and bolts all the way around this thing. I think there's six of them. And if you were to look toward the rear of your coach, and again, this is a, a Freightliner XCS chassis the uh, the desiccant or the air dryer would be on the driver's side or the left side um, facing board. That's Ford. Obviously, there's a rear end. And that is to the rear, and that is the engine in the rear. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll start taking these, uh, these bolts out and uh, taking the housing off of the uh, air dryer so we can get to the desiccant filter. All right, guys, um, let me get my light right here. So here's the air dryer. What I figured out is I cannot, I, I will not be able to remove the housing from the air dryer in its current location. So basically what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to remove the air dryer from its mounts. So there's, there's two bolts at top and two bolts at the bottom on the frame. And I've got to remove this entire air dryer um, down from the from the chassis, so to speak. So basically, what I've already done was I've removed. I kept the supply line, and I'm assuming this is coming from the uh, compressor because it's a pretty pretty hefty thick rubber hose. It's got enough of slack in it. I believe I can just drop it down down to the ground down here with that connected, and I'll be fine. Um, however, I had to remove. I had to unplug the heater wire, which is right here. I had to unplug the uh, air hose, and I'm assuming that goes to the rest of the air system. And then there's also a valve control line, which is right, right there. If you can see it, I had to remove that. So now that I've gotten everything disconnected where I can actually drop this entire air dryer, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove the bolts from the chassis, and I'm gonna drop this thing down to the ground. I'm gonna let it hang from this thick thick hose and there there's plenty of there's plenty of slack in it so be back in a minute all right so i've actually uh was successful in removing or dropping the air dryer down onto the ground here so i've got the entire air dryer assembly sitting on the ground i do have it it's not really hanging from the um, air supply line that comes from the uh air compressor on the engine um, it's just sitting here, and that is a braided, a braided hose, so it's all good. It's it's not under any distress or anything like that. But at any rate, um, in order to remove uh, the air dryer from your chassis, which is right here, um, it took. Uh, I used two 14 millimeter wrenches. I used a ratchet wrench and this regular wrench, and I removed uh, the two. Uh, 
bolts and nuts uh, from the bottom. I was gonna remove the two nuts from the top, but I decided to use a, um, let's see, what is this? This is a, uh, this is a 7 16 uh, socket. And this is a band clamp. It's got a screw back here on the back and you can't even see it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this thing around so I can get to it next time. There it goes. So I'm gonna turn around this way, just a band clamp. And I loosened the band clamp, which is around the can, uh, as you can see on the top right here. So I loosened the band clamp and I just, I was sitting up here on my lap and I just, I, I just easily lowered it down to my lap and then I set it on the ground. So now I can move on to, uh, removing, I think there's, oh gosh, it's probably, I think there's eight, eight nuts hang, holding this thing on. So I'll go ahead and remove all these nuts and then I'll, uh, come back in uh, with the rest of the video whenever that's done and show you what this thing looks like uh, so we can access the filter inside the housing. Be back in a few. All right, guys. So um, let's get the light in here so we can see what's cool. what I'm doing. I had to actually put the thing back on the chassis because what I realized is these, these uh, nuts uh, for the housing, they're literally so tight that I am unable to loosen them with this canister and the air dryer just free floating on the ground down here. So um, I decided to mount it back to the chassis so I can see if I can loosen these uh, these nuts. So um, they may take some PV blaster or something. They're awfully dirty. Um, I'm not sure why they're so, it looks like they're lock nuts. They're, they're on there pretty tight. So uh, now that's back up on the chassis and I got some leverage, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, See if I can get this thing uh, removed. All right, so I finally got the the air dryer assembly loose from its home. And uh, up here, the canister is precariously hanging uh, from the strap in the very top. And then down here is the bottom part of the uh, air dryer with the uh, desiccate filter inside it. And so, I'm actually going to go wash my hands. Um, I'm a little dirty. And I want to make sure that I clean as much as possible. I want to make sure I clean the entire area here because it's, I mean, obviously imperative that you don't want to get any dirt inside this thing whenever you replace that desk filter. I mean, that's the whole purpose for it is to uh, release debris and moisture from the air system. So I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands up and uh, then I'll go in here and we'll attempt to remove the desiccate filter uh, from the air dryer housing and uh, put the new one on. So I'll be back in a minute. But that's it right there. It's, uh, I, I, I would call this a, not so much a do-it-yourselfer uh, <laughs> job, but if you're, if you're sewing, Inclined and mechanically able, um, this is something you can most certainly do in your driveway to your RV uh, instead of going to, you know, the big truck shop or the Freightliner shop. You want to save yourself a few bucks. But uh, anyway, I'll be back in a minute after I wash my hands and get out from under this thing. All right, I'm back. Um, so <laughs> after a few moments later, um, I had to put the uh, dryer um, back up on the uh, chassis and bolt it back down with the uh, desiccant filter in it. And then I also had to go to Harbor Freight Tools and get one of these uh, one of these strap wrenches. Um, basically, I couldn't I couldn't get the I couldn't turn the desk filter off of the housing with my bare hands. I mean, it, it's on there tight. After eight years, it's uh, it's not coming off. So hopefully I will be able to get this uh, strap wrench on here and uh, get it loose. So uh, I'll be back in a minute and uh, show you guys if I was successful in getting it loose. Okay, be back in a minute. All right, guys, so check this out. <clears throat> I was uh, successful in turning this uh, desiccant filter off with a strap wrench. Basically, I had to use two hands. I had to hold 
Um, oh, I can't do it when I'm holding the camera. But that side over there had the whole back of strap and I did get it loose. So um, what a win. I'm gonna go and get this thing off and uh, we will start to reinstall the new desiccant, desiccant filter and get this thing uh, buttoned up. All right. Okay, so I removed the uh, desiccant uh, filter um, as well as the two O-rings um, that were around it. Um, there's an O-ring around uh, this edge right here, and there's an O-ring around this edge right here. And I made sure that uh, this whole entire area was clean, free of debris. You obviously don't want the debris in here. And um, the new kit comes with a new o-rings and uh right there and so i'm going to put the uh, new o-rings in here and uh, it comes with grease i'm gonna grease them up real good stick them back in here and we should be uh good to go so i'll be back in a minute i just wanted to show y'all what it looks like uh without the uh filter on it and let's see if i can get the light on here and i got more dirt on i gotta clean it out again but anyway that's what it looks like um uh, that's pretty much what it looks like interesting without the uh filter in there so let's go ahead and get this thing buttoned up all right and now uh, this is what it looks like with the rings on there i got them all good and lubed up greased up really good got it in the seat and now we should be ready to put this uh filter back in its home all right all right, so I have, um, I'm in the process of reinstalling the uh, housing, if you will, the container. This container right here, air tank, for lack of better terms, back onto the uh, air dryer. Okay, this is a question for YouTube. Um, I may be doing this all wrong, but you know what? I'm going to roll with it because in my mind, I don't think it makes a difference. But the way they put this together was the bolts were going through, okay, if you can see this, the bolts were going through the bottom and coming up this way, and the nut was on top, okay? What I'm doing is I'm installing the bolt through the top, letting it, letting it slide down, and I am screwing the nut in from the bottom. Okay. These are nylon lock nuts. So they're not going to come off. And, I mean, these things are torqued down pretty good. I, I think um, I, did read, I did read the specs on this. And the, um, the torque on these is uh, 50, uh, 50 inch pounds. No. Foot pounds? 50 something. Anyway, I'm going to tighten them back just as uh, just as tight as they were when I loosened them. Okay, that that you know, it's going to be like it's going to be like when I tighten it, it's going to be uh, click. I'm going to do I'm going to do myself click. I don't know they're tight and they will not be over tight. But anyway, I wonder if I'm just doing this all wrong and going to have problems. I mean, this this is nothing but a fastener. And in my mind, it doesn't make any difference if this bolt is going down or up. I mean, it's it's the same amount of force is going, going to be applied through these washers and through the housing and through the air dryer, regardless of whether it is in any orientation. Do I have that right? Leave a comment down below and let me know if I'm right or wrong. Um, and if... If I'm wrong, I will have to get back up under here and turn them all back around. <laughs> but first, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to crank the damn thing up, and I'm going to see if I have an air leak, which I, I really don't think I will. But long term, really, does it really make a difference if they are going up with the bolt nut on top or down in the nut on the bottom? Y'all let me know. All right, so just when I thought I was almost done... I made yet another mistake. Um, <laughs> so, after I got all my bolts in and got them tightened down, I realized something. Let me get this light turned again. 
There happens to be two, two long bolts. There's one right there, and there's one right there. Well, guess what? I put them in the wrong spot. These long bolts should go over on the back side over here, right there, uh, where the bracket is. There's a nut way back, see back there? There's two of them. There's one on this side and one on the other side. So I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna move them around to the correct spot. <clears throat> this is why I enjoy working on my own stuff because if a junior tech who probably have never seen one of these things and you take your RV to get fixed and they replace it. They may or may not put the bolts in the correct place. But anyway, that's my thought behind doing things yourself. If you um you work on these things yourself, you, you learn a lot. It is a learning process. And uh, see, I dropped my phone in the process. But hey, it's all good. Let's get it all straightened back out here if I can. Where were we? We were right here. So, um... <laughs> As I was saying, I enjoy working on my own stuff. Um, it, it's a learning process. You learn as you go. And if you if you put something in the wrong place and you and you notice it, you know what? Go back and fix it. So let's get this thing fixed and get these uh, bolts back in the or in the correct spot, and we can get this thing finished. Back in a few. All right. So I'm finally finished with the job. Um, I just want to show y'all where I was at under this motorhome. So. Um, okay, so this is the motorhome in the barn. Um, this is the DEF tank bay. So that door that door closes right here. And uh, I just had it open for a little bit extra light when it was uh, daylight outside, but it's dark now, so I've got a flashlight. But anyway, the area that I was in um, was... <laughs> so, let's see here. The air dryer is like right up there. And I was literally sitting Indian style up under the motorhome uh, between the frame rail on the other side and the drive shaft. And I was reaching over the drive shaft to reach the air dryer and uh, uh, deck, it, deck, what the hell is it? Um, hell, I don't forgot. Um, <laughs> decadent, decadent filter desiccant filter that's it god it when you get old it's, it gets bad anyway desiccant filter so i was in there replacing the desiccant filter but anyway this is what we've all been waiting for uh let's see if the thing will hold air um but this is the moment of truth let's see if i have royally screwed this thing up or am i winner dinner chicken dinner winner 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 chicken dinner whatever you want to call it <laughs> all right i'm actually i'm actually tired guys i've been working i've been working all day and uh i'm in the it business and it's just it's stressful enough as it is and then i have to work on my own mess after work so anyway uh let's turn a light on how about that let's see here one light two light okay now we got a light on the subject um oh by the way i've got to replace I got to replace this um, in the window shade. It broke. The electric window shade goes up and down in the front. It broke, so the motor went out. So I ordered two different sizes. I don't know which one will fit, so hopefully one of these will fit um, inside the roller blind. So I got to fix that as well. Haven't even got that. Haven't even got to that yet. Um, I, I kind of did this at uh, what I figured was the uh, more high priority fix or or issue. Okay, I'm tired. Um, well, it's a moment of truth. Let's, uh, we have no air, none. It is airless. Let's, uh, let's see what happens. Let's crank her up. Here we go. All right, actually, wow, I'm gonna run back here so I can just make sure ain't nothing gonna blow up. I hear the air. So let's get back here and just make sure nothing's gonna blow up while we're doing this. I mean, obviously I couldn't get back to the front to cut it off quick enough. At least I can hear things back here better. Okay, so. I hear it. She's pumping. Let's see what it does. I, I should probably get too close to it. It might 
blow up. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's the um, discharge. Oh, or the, yeah. I think it's the relief valve, which is normal. But well, let's go see if we're building there now. I don't think it's gonna blow up, so that's good. So let's go see if we're building there. Always oh, something to work on, man, I tell you. But this motor on now is almost nine years old, so it takes maintenance, a lot of it. Yeah, we're building there. I'll tell you, let's turn the pretty lights on. There we go. Got lights. We can see what's going on here. 75 PSI. Both tanks are filling up. That's good. That's real good. I want to hear that infamous... That's what I want to hear. Let's open this window so we can hear it. I know we're going to hear it anyway in this barn. So, when you guys... Uh, for those of you who are watching this video and not familiar with uh, diesel trucks, heavy duty trucks, basically what I was doing was I was replacing the air dryer and, or the uh, desiccant filter in the air dryer. And that's that's the thing that has the, the relief valve on it that goes pew, every, if you pull up beside a dump truck, a 18 wheeler, a diesel motor home with the air system, that's what, that, that's what that's doing. It's blowing off the air. The air compressor pumps up, there's a relief valve in there, and it, it uh, releases that, I believe, 150 PSI, or actually 120 PSI, um, and there's uh, another valve in there that tells the compressor when to stop, and that's that's your relief valve, and that's every time you hear it go, pew, uh, that's, that's when you know it's um, filled up with air. Now, if you hear a truck doing that a lot, that means there's a problem, because that means there's an air leak somewhere in the system, and, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of trucks rolling down the road that has a lot of air leaks. There it goes. But it did sound a little different this time. It had a little bit of a longer to it. It wasn't quite as quick as my other system. So now what we can do is I'm going to hear and um, well, what I'm going to do is before I hit the brakes, I'm going to release the brakes. It's, it's not a good idea to hit your brakes whenever your parking brake is on. Now, with that being said, I did read the entire the entire Bendix bro or Bendix uh, what is it reference manual or technician manual on how these systems are made and designed. And there is actually another valve that will relieve the parking brake in the back if you do happen to step on your service brake with the parking brake on. So it shouldn't hurt it, but I'm not going to take the chance. So we're going to go ahead and release the parking brake. Well, I didn't want to do that. Now my damn my. Uh, I had my jacks down. It freaks out when you do that. So anyway, you know what? Just deal. So, yeah, 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 whatever. I was in the back with it jacked up. So that right there in itself will cause the airbags to inflate, and then it will do the again. So let's, let's, let's just wait for it. I didn't have to hit the brakes. All I had to do was that. It's freaking out. So let's see what happens. It'll fill up with air again. Yes, sir. She was freaking out. Freaking out. And I'm here in my barn. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. It's not happy, that's for sure. Because I'm in neutral. I push the brake like that, it'll stop beeping. So let's see what happens. Let's hear it do again. So now it's got to inflate the airbags. It's going to take a little longer to inflate the airbags. There's primary tank and secondary tank. Um, they serve two functions. They serve uh, uh, your they they do your brakes as well as your air ride system, which have airbags on the uh, all four corners. So it's going to take a minute. And I am getting the inside of my motorhome dirty because I am dirty. I look like a grease monkey. Literally. Grease monkey. I'm 
front light. Do I get any dirt on it? I got a little bit of dirt on it. Oh well. Yeah, my, my elbow is just so dirty. It won't set parking brake on. <laughs> Alright, let's listen. It's getting ready to go. Let's hear it. Well, that's interesting. It does sound, um, it sounds a little different. Let's hit the brake one time. Let's see what we got. And we do that. It's going to build air yet again. Let's see if it's going to build air. It's building air again. Every time you apply your brakes, it's going to, it's got to, replenish the air that it's lost through the um, application of your service brake. That's how air brakes work. Let's see, maybe I didn't push them enough. I, it's got to go below a certain threshold for it to pump up again. I, I, I really can't hear the compressor. Is it going? Is it going? Is it going? Is it going? Huh, maybe not. Tell you, let's do this. Just, uh, you know what? There's an interesting issue I have. My uh, my air, my uh, for some reason my air bags are not working. I don't think. Let's, maybe it's because the parking brake. I think that's what's freaking it out. Let's let's go ahead and set this parking brake. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay. So. There's so many walkout features in this thing. If your if your parking brake's not set, your air system will not dump. So that, that's a good thing. Yeah, I just learned something. So if you, for some reason, reach over here and hit your air, your uh, airbags, if your parking brake is not set, it will not deflate. Hmm, that makes sense, okay? Makes total sense. That means if you're driving down the road and hit that for some stupid reason, you're not gonna go bouncing down the road on your freaking axles. On your bump stops, I guess it'll. All right, so let's uh, let's inflate the airbags again, and we'll see those gauges go down again. There it goes, right there. You know that's interesting. It makes a much longer than it did before. I wonder if that's just a product of having a clean desiccant filter. It must be. Okay. So now we're going to fill the airbags again. And this time, while it's doing that, let's go. Let's go back outside. All right. So, yeah. Uh, let's listen to it from out here. Let's go to the back. It'll be good and loud. Let's see. Nighttime. Are my lights working? Yeah, they're working. It's always good in there. <laughs> okay. So. Let's see what it sounds like back here after it finishes building there. I like a grease monkey. Just, I'm totally dirty. <laughs> All right, let's see. All right, come on. Wow, there it goes. Yes, sir. All right, now. Now what we want to do is the second part of this testing, if you will. We're going to turn everything off and see if there's any air leaks. 
I think that's the that's going to be the the real the real deal there. If it uh, if it doesn't leak, then we'll know we we got it all fixed up. So, man, I got my seat dirty. Oh well, I have to clean it. Um, I'm gonna turn this dome light off. I turned it on a while ago. All right, let's go ahead and shut her down. Here we go. Okay, turn the lights off too, so I stop beeping at me. And let's go see if there's a leak. I do hear something. I don't know. Let's go see if there's a leak. I don't like the sound of that. Oh, you know what? I got a leak up here. I think I have the same leak I had before. It's not leaking in the rear no more. Definitely leaking up here. I still got that same problem. But back here, let's see if it's leaking back here. Nothing back here. Okay. But I do have a leak up front, and I was afraid of that. I had a leak there before, and I know exactly where it's at. So let's, uh, let's, let me make another video about that. I've already, I've already got a video about that and apparently it's leaking again. It's leaking in uh, the left front tank from the front part of the tank to the rear part of the tank with a, a quick connect line. All right, so I may end this video here. I don't know if I'll make another video about the continuation of leaking the front, but uh, any rate, if uh, you like my video, subscribe, hit the like button. If you want any more videos like this, let me know. Um, RV maintenance, repair, and tips. This is No Grip. I'm out. Peace.